Well, hello, and hello, ladies. Welcome to Sunday Santino Cigar Review. I'm Michael. And I'm Marcus. And today we're gonna to be pairing this beautiful bourbon age red wine with the Crown Heads Buckeye Land. Let's do this. Uh, the second episode, we're breaking down the Ohio Buckeye Land. This was the, is the first cigar made for Crown Heads by Drew Estate. And it's, it's the fourth um, district area custom cigar made by Drew Estate, following Tennessee, Hawaii, and Texas. Um, again, so far, a beautiful cigar. It's got that, that red velvet label that, that um, admires these uh, region cigars that are on each, the, each different color with each different region. Um, as I stated, first cigar made by Drew Estate. Uh, Mike, go ahead and give us the breakdown on this thing, man. Well, it, again, it is a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, a Connecticut broadleaf binder, and interesting, a Nicaraguan and Pennsylvania fillers. Never heard of that, Mark, and I'm sure most of our audience didn't even know you can make a cigar with from fillers from Pennsylvania. You're going to have to explain that. Well, we are the greatest country in the world, so therefore we do have tobacco, too. Now, um, in recent recent years, I'll probably say since the boom, probably about the past 10 years, you've noticed that true Connecticut shades are starting to make a comeback, actually being the number one tobacco uh, being sold and bought right now, um, uh, monetary-wise. Uh, when it comes to the fillers, if you can find a good broad leaf, a good, a good, a good leaf somewhere on the priming that you can use for a filler that's going to work with your construction, you can use it. So I really feel like when you start getting into some of these more special blends, these unique, these unique blends that are put together for certain reasons, you're gonna find some of those offsetting tobaccos you wouldn't usually find. Something like a Pennsylvania filler, um, like a Connecticut Broadleaf being a binder. You know? It's amazing. Are any other companies using these Pennsylvania I'm, fillers? I'm sure they are. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I know exactly who is, because unless we're smoking it, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm, I can't dig that deep into it. But uh, I do feel like it's more of a boutique thing, you know. Um, but being done that way, it offers, we'll get to the flavors in a minute, but it, it offers, the way the cigar is constructed, it gives itself, just like the rest of the region cigars, um, it gives it a very unique taste that is its own. You know, I think you can agree with that. There's, you know, I, it's, it's something very different. It is. You know? All right, everyone, we're going to do a pairing today. Normally, we would pair with a bourbon or scotch, but we're going to do a little something a little sweeter today just like us mark <laughs> we're gonna uh, pair cooper and thief red blend it's aged in a bourbon barrel um yeah it's something different you know when like like you said it went a little sweeter today um typically just wanted to try something with, with something unique we wanted to do something a little unique as well you know we're not we're not typically wine pairs you know wine with dinner and whatnot but usually when i smoke i don't pair with wine um, we've got a vast selection of wine here, probably upwards of 100 different bottles now. Um, but with this bourbon barrel aged red wine, it still kind of feeds into a little bit of that bourbon side that we really enjoy. Um, <clears throat> the wine itself, it's a red blend, so it's still got those subtle sweet notes, but it's got this aroma and, for lack of a better term, it's got balls behind it when, when, you, when, you, when you drink it. Um, it comes in with a little bit of flavor power but then it also finishes rather sweet. Now, where that goes really great with this cigar, Mike, I think you'll agree, there's this real, you can pick up on that, that shortness of the Connecticut and the spice coming from the San Andreas and the Nicaragua in there. Yes, however, because I am a little bit of a cigar uh, beginner, when he, when Mark, when you mentioned spice, by no means do I find this spicy and overpowering. So how would you explain that subtle spice? No, yeah. Different than what most people associate a full-bodied spicy cigar. And that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, what I mean by that is when the smoke comes into your mouth, this, this cigar, yet again, has a very dense, creamy white smoke. I mean, it, it sits here and the smoke just kind of dances off the cigar. 
So when you draw that smoke into your mouth and it's on your palate, whether you're a retrohaler or a holder, or a, however you release the smoke, you'll find this subtle tingle on the back of your tongue. Almost like you just got done eating something like peppered salad. You, know, you get that little tingle in the back of your throat. But it doesn't That's take away spice. from the rest no, of the cigar. No, not at all. It actually really complements it. You don't really get the spice until the smoke is in your mouth. So you pick up on those other, those dry flavors, that raw taste that you get on top. And when it, when it, when it comes in, it allows you to accentuate all those flavors. And Mark, what is the price point of this cigar? Well, the Bug Island sits here at Santino's right at $11. And that, that's great. That's what people really associate a typical boutique uh, fine cigar in that 8 to $12 range. Right. That, that is a cigar that everyone can enjoy. And right. last week's um, cigar, uh, the... Um, the Crown Head Court. The Crown Head Court. What yeah, is the price the, range uh, of that? 2018 Crown Head Court came in three sizes. So varying on the size here at Santino's between nine fifty and eleven twenty five. Right. It's time for the try, buy, or deny section of our show. And here's why. Well, this cigar, the Buckeye Land, um, just like the rest of the regional releases, these, again, are definitely a try. Try the cigar. Each one of these regional releases has their own distinct blend, their own distinct rollout, their own distinct taste, flavors, and strengths. Now, this cigar with this red blend, I'm not, I'm not just saying that it's got to be this red blend. I'm sure it could probably be any red wine. Something with a little bit of dry sweetness, like you'll get in a Merlot, some higher end blends, or, or the heavier blends, really, really complements this cigar, it does. It brings in some of those sweet, subtle notes that help enhance some of the stuff on the back end, really lets you pick up on that tingling spice we talked about. Um, so for me, the Buckeye Land is definitely a try, and you'll probably end up buying it along the way as well. And for me, I'm not even gonna mention the wine, Mark did a great job with that. For me, when I choose a cigar, Look at this, folks. I don't know if you can see this, but I like a long ash. And with the Buckeye, this does it effortlessly. I don't have to hold it in a certain way to keep the ash. I'm not, I'm not overcompensating. I'm, this is just how this cigar uh, burns. And it, it's definitely a try and a buy, maybe a box. Definitely. Well, guys, go down there, like, comment, subscribe, ding our little bell. Again, stay tuned for all the updates, just the tips coming out you know, this week again. Um, we look forward to hearing from everybody. Mike, what do you say? Remember, the most important thing, when you have a choice between a beautiful woman and a fine cigar, always choose the beautiful woman smoking the fine cigar. Cheers.